There's all this mystique and mystery around it and people go, oh, you know, I, I can't possibly use AI. We're all using AI, whether we realize it or not. What do you say when people say AI is going to take my job, yeah. that all of our jobs are at risk because of AI? I think that's totally wrong. AI is not going to take your job, but somebody who understands AI might. When you look at the way the technology and the rate of adoption of the technology is like nothing else we've seen before. So when I look into the future, I think we're going to see a very different world in the next two to three years. Hi, I'm Maddie Hale, and I'm delighted to say that Times Radio has partnered with ServiceNow to help you understand how to put AI to work for people. And ServiceNow AI agents are here to drive exponential productivity across every corner of your business. Learn how from our experts, demos, and get a sneak peek at what's ahead at servicenow.com slash UK slash AI dash agents. Joining me now today is Adam Spearing, ServiceNow's EMEA Head of AI Innovation. Adam, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let's start off with just explaining to everyone who you are and what you do. Right. So I'm a, I'm a 30 plus year tech veteran <laughs> um, of this industry. And um, at ServiceNow, my responsibility is all across here to help our customers and clients understand what AI could do for them, but also help them on how they actually get on with that journey. Because it is really transformational, the opportunities mm. that are ahead of them. And I spend time with clients, big clients, small clients all over, all over Europe. When you're speaking to the average person or even any of your clients, what are you telling them in bullet points kind of why they should be using AI? So the, there is a massive opportunity with AI, right? We've all seen it come along over the last, or crystallize over the last couple of years. You know, we've been building this technology ever since I've been involved in tech. And the opportunity is not just about a little bit of cleverer software that does something better or faster, but actually this is a real transformation opportunity of a, of a generation, right? Because the way this technology works, the intelligence within this technology, especially when we talk about agents, mm. means that with many of my clients, when we're, we're at the very leading edge of what they're thinking about, they're looking at organizational redesign, mm. right? So instead of how do I have a finance and an HR department, it's how do I have a person responsible for, say, the process of quote to cash? How do I transform my business to provide increased shareholder value and actually make it much more efficient and much more operational as well? So there is a balance in these opportunities. And it's not, you know, to just look at the, the savings is, is a mistake. I think mm. to look at the potential and, and the opportunity for change is terrific. Is that kind of the first thing your clients are looking for, though, is to save money? Um, well, initially it starts like that. And, and we, we went through this hype cycle of, oh, AI, let's spend money on it. And we're not really sure what we're yeah. going to do with it. Then we get to this kind of consolidated period where we're trying to build projects and programs and use cases based off of a, an ROI. And I think that is absolutely foundational, right? Don't solve a problem unless it's worth solving or, or change a process unless it's worth changing. But what I do see those real leaders that I think are really visionary are the ones who are saying, not just can this save me money, make me faster, make me more efficient and quicker and give a better employee experience and customer experience. But actually those that can say, wow, I can see how I can be a totally different organization. Mm. I can really be a, a, a leading organization in my industry that can do things differently in ways that sometimes we've not even thought of before. And that's pretty exciting. How do you tell people how to use AI in their everyday lives? In your personal lives or professional? I think or both. 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 Yeah, both. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing with AI is there's all this mystique and mystery around it. And people go, oh, you know, I, I can't possibly use AI. We're all using AI whether we realize it or not. If you have a Netflix account, you're using AI because yeah. it's curating what is going to help you see that you might like. And in your personal lives, um, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, this weekend, I was doing some chores around the house, a bit of DIY and what have you. I had no idea how to do this particular thing. And so rather than go on and, and find a YouTube video and I've got mm. to find the segment in the video, I went on a, 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 an AI tool and I described the problem I was trying to fix <clears throat> and it came up with a, a way of doing it. But that was great, but the conditions weren't right. So I then said, well, hang on a minute. I'm This is a mm. different kind of setup. And I got a different, a kind of evolved answer to it. Now that's very generative in its basis. But that's an example of, of using your AI in, in what you do personally. My wife runs a charity, okay, and it's um, she was looking to uh, bring an a, a intern on board and she needed to put together a job description. And she knew it was going to take her at least a day or a day and a half. So she kept putting it off, kept putting it <laughs> off. And then she said, well, hang on, I'll, I'll try this AI stuff. Finally. So, well, she did. 
So, so, and she's an artist, right? She's not a technic- technolo- technologist. So she, she went to, to, to the tool she was using and she put in the requirements and then she said, and I want it from this college close by to us and I think people on this syllabus. And within a minute, it had produced this job description mm. against the syllabus, against the, the requirements she had for the intern. And it was, it was 90% right. Not 100%, but 90% right. But, so it's really cutting corners for, for people. Is it something that... Uh, should should AI be something that everyone is excited to use? Because I still think when people see AI, it is intimidating. It is, and 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 you've got to you've got to demystify it, mm. right? So in our personal lives, those are examples of generative AI. But actually, when we start to the the agentic and agents, agents are there to do tasks for you, right? They can help you perform operations that you would normally take time over and actually have to do. And that that is going to start to come into our personal lives as well, right? When when your technology, your calendar can say to you, oh, your dental appointment, I've got a dental appointment this afternoon, oh. that actually <laughs> clashes with a meeting and you need to catch the train at this time. We've started to see that. And there's going to be a lot more of that kind of interaction and, and making us more efficient and effective as, as people and human beings and actually freeing up what's up here. Mm. Because we, you know, we all have parts of our our, our jobs and our roles and our lives that are pretty mundane and we're doing repetitive tasks and we know what the answer is going to be but we've got to go through the motions and we can relieve human beings from a lot of that and free us up to do more interesting creative uh, more intelligent tasks and let the technology help help us to achieve that uh, uh, but, but what do you say when people say ai is going to take my job yeah. that all of our jobs are at risk because of ai i'm I think that's totally wrong really yeah i'll give you an example i'll give you guys loads of examples um Look at accountants, right? If you go back to the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, we had rooms of people copying ledgers from one book to another book to another book. That went away years ago. But we still have accountants, Mm. right? But their tasks and roles have changed. So I think what you're going to see in the world of work is not... Um, is not a wholesale shift. You are going to see certain roles and certain functions within roles start to be managed by the technology. But the, the people that actually drive those tasks and, and think those through, we're still going to need. So there's a, there's a quote that's been used many times, AI is not going to take your job, but somebody who understands AI might. Yeah, and, and that's why I have lots of children, as we spoke about earlier. And what I encourage them all to do is embrace this, use it for your own advantage, right? Whether you're doing an interview or something simple, or whether you are in the workplace mm. and actually um, making changes to how you operate. Be innovative mm. with the technology. Embrace it. Uh, it is obviously very beneficial for businesses and it's been, you know, labelled a silver bullet for businesses. But you just mentioned your ch- children. What yeah. I worry about with someone who actually has no children, but I worry this this will make children lazy. Now, you've got a, a child, a teenager. Are you worried that AI is going to become so reliant for children and teenagers at school that they're really not doing the work, doing the steps to learn? No. I, well, I think it all comes down to the child, right? Because you've got to encourage them to be um, inquisitive. You've got to encourage them to be self-motivated. Mm-hmm. And, and all of you know, we all need to have that in our lives. And I think there's an opportunity to extend their learning because when the internet came along, suddenly we had access to huge amounts of information. We didn't have to go to a library. And if they happen to have the book, you could research that, that section the library had, suddenly had all the information of the world available to you at your fingertips. And similarly with AI, you can take that to the next level and actually use it to do things for you. I, an example, my son was looking for a, a flat in North London, and, and but he was getting pretty frustrated at having to trawl all the different sites. Now, he's quite clever and more technical than most. So he set something up and every morning he got an update on the new flats wow. in his price range with his requirements, two bedrooms, one bathroom, first floor, etc. He got a shortlist. And so he'd use the technology for his vote. Now he's a he's on the extreme end of understanding this, but everybody can embrace mm. this and use it to their advantage. So do I worry about youngsters? I think there are more um Pressing issues around yeah. social media, which we're not going to go into this conversation. <laughs> We've obviously just watched adolescence, clearly. But <laughs> well, yes, exactly. But I think there is there's an opportunity for people who are, are motivated self starters mm-hmm. to really think, well, how can I? How can this help me? How can this help me? When you when someone's intimidated by AI and they don't really know where to start and they don't know how it can help them, where do you say someone should? learn about AI, where do they start? Right. First of all, get your head out of the sand because this stuff is, is happening, right? Okay. It's happening all around you. And, and yes, there are lots of, you know, adolescence is a good example of uh, examples of that. 
First thing is embrace it, right? Go online. There are loads of podcasts. There are technical podcasts. There are non-technical podcasts. Talk to your friends and peers. You know, when you go out and have a coffee with someone, just say, well, what do you think of this AI stuff? Start the conversation. And then there are terrific learning resources. You know, there are MIT courses, Oxford University. There's lots of these courses. Many of them are free and available to you. Some of them are, are ones you have to pay for. I mean, and we, for example, um, launched or relaunched our ServiceNow University, where there's a lot of free content there people can go to and actually just start to experiment. And it is not as scary as people think. These two little letters terrify people, but actually it's quite simple when you really peel it back and, mm. and, and get to the, the root of what it can do for you. Well, I think people look at AI and think back to what happened when the internet first came and, mm. we, and we thought this is going to absolutely take over our jobs, our lives, we're going to become so reliant on it. But Adam, just a final question for you. When you look at the future of AI, what does it look like? I... I I think that's a re that's more difficult than ever to predict because the technology is going to start to show us patterns and behaviours and ways of thinking and operating that we don't understand today. Um, and I, I think when you look at the way the technology and the rate of adoption of the technology is like nothing else we've seen before. So when I look into the future, I think we're going to see a very different world in the next two to three years. And I think the organisations and the people who really lean in and embrace this and, and demystify it for themselves are going to be the ones in five and ten years' time that are really capitalising on this opportunity. So that's, that's where I think don't wait, don't hesitate get your head out the sand, get involved in this and start learning it for your own advantage. Adam Spearing from ServiceNow, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And thanks once again to ServiceNow, where agents are here to drive exponential productivity across every corner of your business. Learn how from our experts, demos, and get a sneak peek at what's ahead at servicenow.com uk slash AI dash agents. Goodbye.